So these elevated FFA levels are a disaster. So the fat cell initially is your friend. He's your friend, he goes to foe. <laughs> then he becomes friend a bad, to foe. bad guy, yeah. okay? So that's number four. Uh, number five is the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, and of course, we'll, I'm sure I'll talk more about this when we talk about treatment, but when you eat a meal, you release two incretin hormones, uh, GLP-1 and GIP, uh, glucon-like peptide one and glucose-dependent insulin trophic polypeptide. Those two incretin hormones, when you eat a meal, account for about 70% of the insulin that's released in response to the meal. So now, what is the problem? Is the problem that you don't release enough GLP-1 and GIP, or is it that your beta cell is refractory to the GLP-1 and GIP? Well, it's the later. Just to, so let's say that again, Ralph. I wanna make sure people understand this, and the reason it's important is, Obviously, everybody listening to us right now is very familiar with drugs like semaglutide and terzepatide. Yep. But I want people to understand why those drugs were developed. And of course, semaglutide's already probably what the third generation of it anyway. So when we go back in time, we'll understand why people try to develop these drugs. But just say that again. So you eat your meal. Yep. GIP, GLP-1 are increased. And they come out normally. Yep. That's and, not the problem. And they're telling the beta cell, hey, Make more insulin. Beta cells deaf, not listening. Is resistant to the GLP-1 and GIP. And he should be responding to 70% of his input should come from that signal. 70% of the insulin that's going to come out is, in response is dependent to that. on that GLP-1 and GIP. So you can imagine that that's a huge problem at the level of the beta cell in terms of the defect in insulin secretion. And tell me, why is it mechanistically <laughs> that that the beta cell becomes deaf yeah. to GLP-1 and GIP. I, I don't know that we know the answer uh, to that. So it's just another horrible piece of this puzzle where yes. everything starts to work against the patient. Yes. So this is an area of, of course, intense investigation, but the clinical counterpart of this is you've already mentioned the, the drugs that are out there, the GLP-1 receptor agonist. What I'm doing is I'm giving you a pharmacologic dose of GLP-1 and I'm overcoming the resistance at the level of the beta cell. Now, I, there's another component to this that we'll get to, and that's glucotoxicity. So, uh, and these were studies that were done by Jens Holtz and the, the group in Denmark that they took people and they uh, infused GIP. We're talking about GIP. Yes. And you don't respond to the GIP. These are type two diabetics. And then they intensively treated them with insulin and, and lowered their glucose. 